Hello, my name's Dave Bignall, and welcome to my Wii review of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Now, when Sega became a third-party publisher and were no longer in rivalry with Nintendo, there was a lot of speculation about the characters of Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario the Plumber coming together in one game. Um, and I don't think anyone would have dreamt up the idea of putting them together in an Olympic game. Seems a very, very strange decision. And it is indeed a very strange game. Um, now, from the offset, you may think, what on earth's going on here? And I've played it a lot, still think that. Beijing 2008 Olympics mixed in with Sonic and Mario. Very, very bizarre. But here is my review for it, nonetheless. Now, Sega have had a good go at putting every single event you would find at the Olympics into this and have recreated the world beautifully, and it really looks like Beijing Olympics did in 2008. Um, although, of course, they didn't actually have the characters from Sonic the Hedgehog or Mario in there. So, um, you can play as any character, pretty much, from the Sonic world or any character from the Mario world, and you can also play with your Miis, which is a brilliant addition. Makes you wonder that perhaps this game would have worked just as well without Sonic and Mario and you could have just been your me and I think it would have worked fine as a sort of extension from Wii Sports but hey they decided to put these characters in there and it's very interesting and it's quite funny to play as some of these characters and um, they each have their um, skills like you'd imagine that Sonic was um, of course you know one of the fastest Peach perhaps uh, is better at some of the uh, aquatic sports, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, they've used their special skills in that way and you can play as any of the characters during the game. And there's so many different events here. Um, they also, throughout the game, unlock other events for you, depending if you've uh, completed certain challenges, played the game for a certain amount of time. So there's lots and lots of gameplay here. Up to four players can play simultaneous, which is brilliant. It's a shame they don't have a Wi-Fi version where you can play with other people online, but hey, you know, it still works quite well as a group game, which is one of the strengths of this. Uh, one of my criticisms with this are some of the controls are way too overcomplicated. Now, for instance, 100 meters, I think this works really well. You just have the Wii remote and the nunchuck, and you wave them about like crazy, and if four of you are doing that at the same time, it's a great laugh. It's brilliant. But some of the other events... Um, can get too overcomplicated with the controls, I think. And at the beginning of each event, they give you the option to have a look at what the controls are and what you have to do for that event. Now, I think there's been a problem with the translation, perhaps, when this game originally came out in Japan. They translated to English and other languages, and I think some things have been missed out in translation, because sometimes trying to decipher the uh, controls are a bit like, you know, the Da Vinci Code or something. It can get a bit difficult and it does take a lot of perseverance and some of the events you just have to try and find out what the controls are for yourself or look up how people do it on YouTube, that kind of thing. Uh, for instance, Javelin, um, the controls they actually tell you to do don't seem to work actually in the game and you have to press a different button combination to make it work. So that can be quite of putting especially if you're just introducing people to this game for the first time. They maybe just want to go at a couple of the events. It, you have to be sort of a mastermind sometimes to work out exactly where to press the button and what you have to do specifically with the remote, blah, blah, blah. So I think some of the events, um, they've gone a bit too crazy with really specific controls that just, you know, put people off. That aside, certainly a lot of um, imagination has gone into this. Um, they've covered the whole Olympics and there's also a section called dream events where they've taken certain Olympic events and uh, kind of take them even further out of fantasy um, than this game anyway and you can just do some very strange things like for instance they've mixed 100 meters and hurdles with a kind of Mario Kart game where you run around and you pick up power-ups and shoot people very bizarre but good fun all the same so the negative sides of this game are that some of the controls on some of the events are so complicated that it renders them nearly impossible to play and it does put you off them. So sometimes you just leave whole sections of the game out because you just can't work out the controls. So that's a real downside to it. And on the plus sides, I think this is a really crazy but imaginative game. Uh, certainly not something you'd expect to see Sonic and Mario in. It seems to work quite well, although it, every now and then you think, what on earth is going on here? But it is a good, it's a brilliant Wii game. It does take a lot of perseverance, though. You can't just sort of pick it up and expect to know everything that easily. But there are some real great highlights, such as 
the 100 metres, the hurdles, that sort of thing works well. Table tennis is brilliant. Fencing is also good fun as well. So there's some really good things to have in this game, but you have to really persevere at it and um, try and work out some very specific controls. My overall rating for this is 8 out of 10. Please subscribe to my Wii Reviews. You can do this by visiting my YouTube channel or indeed www.davebignall.co.uk slash More reviews coming soon.